Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. Uh, welcome to this uh, recording of worship, my sort of front-facing version. Um, I appreciate all your prayers. I'm trying to get papers written, and then I will be back to devotions and hopefully more in-depth versions of these videos and other stuff. Um, just a busy time, but we're going to get there. Um, I do want to mention, if you are interested, we'd like someone to help lead our uh, yard sale. Uh, we need some more leaders to arrange that. And then also, if, if you make it to in-person worship, uh, it would be a great time to consider signing up to be a liturgist. It's not hard. Um, you stand up, you read some scripture, you read a prayer. Um, I love as many voices as we can get in worship. Um, I, so, so consider standing up for that. I also want to mention the next two weeks, as I am working on these papers, we are going to have guest preachers in worship. And so there's some chance. I'm going to do my best to put something out there, but to watch worship the next two Sundays, uh, it'll be the live stream, and I'll try to get that live stream video uploaded to YouTube as well. Uh, but thank you all for your understanding, and I know we'll, we'll talk soon, but today we're here to worship God. So let's pray together. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation that we in the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to read two short scriptures for you. The first is from Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 and verse 10. Uh, you know the story of Jonah. Of course, he ends up in the belly of a whale. Uh, but before that, God calls him to go to Nineveh. Uh, and Jos uh, Jonah does not want to go to Nineveh. I'm trying to remember. I had to got to find that's earlier. And so he tries to run away, and that's how he ends up in the belly of a whale. He gets spit out uh, upon the land and ends up in Nineveh. And it is such a short book, it is hard to find, and I should have marked it, but here we are. Here we go. Um, and I would encourage anyone to read Jonah. It's a short read, and it's a really one of my favorite books of Scripture. So, Jonah's been spit upon the beach. He's ready to go to Nineveh. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across Jonah began to go in the city going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. And from there, the fourth chapter of Jonah is this amazing piece where Jonah's disappointed God forgave them. It's, it's incredible. I, I encourage you to, to go read the rest of the book. Uh, from the gospel, I'm going to read Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we reflect on these scriptures, we're going to have another edition of Gordon Reads a Children's Book. 
A uh, few months ago now, I read Mike Mulligan and his Steam Shovel. Uh, and this is a book, I know it might be reversed in your video. Last stop on Market Street. I don't know where it came from, but we've been reading it a lot in my house and I, I thought I'd read it to you. So let me see if I can get set up here to where I can see the words and show you. Last stop on Market Street by Matt De La Pena and Christian Robinson. The art is beautiful in this book. I probably don't even need to. CJ pushed through the church doors, skipped down the steps. The outside air smelled like freedom, but it also smelled like rain, which freckled CJ's shirt and dripped down his nose. He ducked under his Nana's umbrella, saying, how come we gotta wait for the bus in all this wet? Trees get thirsty too, his Nana told him. Don't you see that big one drinking through a straw? CJ looked for a long time, but never saw a straw. From the bus stop, he watched water pool on flower petals, watched rain patter against the windshield of a nearby car. His friend Colby climbed in, gave CJ a wave, and drove off with his dad. Nana, how come we don't got a car? Boy, what do we need a car for? We got a bus that breathes fire, and old Mr. Dennis, who always has a trick for you. See, the bus has a dragon on it. The bus creaked to a stop in front of them. It sighed and sagged, and the door swung open. What's that I see, Mr. Dennis asked. He pulled a coin from behind CJ's ear, placed it in his palm. Nana laughed her deep laugh and pushed CJ along. They sat right up front. The man across the way was tuning a guitar. An old woman with curlers had butterflies in a jar. Nana gave everyone a great big smile and a good afternoon. She made sure CJ did the same. The bus lurched forward and stopped, lurched forward and stopped. Nana hummed as she knit. How come we always got to go here after church, CJ said. Miguel and Colby never have to go nowhere. I feel sorry for those boys, she told him. They'll never get a chance to meet Bobo or the sunglass man, and I hear Trixie got herself a brand new hat. CJ stared out the window, feeling sorry for himself. He watched cars zip by on either side, watched a group of boys hop curbs on bikes. Oops. I'm skipping a page here. A man climbed aboard with a spotted dog. CJ gave up his seat. How come that man can't see? Boy, what do you know about seeing, Nana told him. Some people watch the world with their ears. That's a fact. Their noses, too, the man said, sniffing at the air. That's a mighty fine perfume you're wearing today, ma'am. Nana squeezed the man's arm and laughed her deep laugh. Squeezed the man's hand. Two older boys got on next. CJ watched as they moved on by and stood in back. See, they've got like an iPod or something. Sure wish I had one of those, he said. Nana set down her knitting. What for? You got the real live thing sitting across from you. Why don't you ask the man if he'll play us a song? CJ didn't have to. The guitar player was already plucking strings and beginning to sing. To feel the magic of music, the blind man whispered, I like to close my eyes. Nana closed hers too. So did CJ and the spotted dog. And in the darkness, the rhythm lifted CJ out of the bus, out of the busy city. He saw sunset colors swirling over crashing waves, saw a family of hawks slicing through the sky, saw the old woman's butterflies dancing free in the light of the moon. CJ's chest grew full and he was lost in the sound and the sound gave him the feeling of magic. The song ended and CJ opened his eyes. Everyone in the bus clapped, even the boys in back. Nana glanced at the coin in CJ's palm. CJ dropped it in the man's hat. Last stop on Market Street, Mr. Dennis called. CJ looked around as he stepped off the bus. Crumbling sidewalks and broken down doors, graffiti tagged windows and boarded up stores. He reached for his Nana's hand. How come it's always so dirty over here? She smiled and pointed to the sky. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're a better witness for what's beautiful. 
CJ saw the perfect rainbow arcing over their soup kitchen. He wondered how his, nan uh, how his Nana always found beautiful where he never even thought to look. He looked all around them again at the bus rounding the corner out of sight and the broken street lamp still lit up bright and the stray cat shadows moving across the wall. When he spotted their familiar faces in the window, he said, I'm glad we came. He thought his Nana might laugh her deep laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, Me too, CJ. Now come on. Or soup kitchen. Wait, I think I missed a... Anyway. It's a beautiful book. And, uh... You know, I wonder, geez, I wonder how it struck you. I, I'm happy to, to share it again, or you can watch the video. First and foremost, the thing I love about that book is it is all about what you do after you get out of church. And, and not just literally, we all have ways we need to spend our day and, and things to do. And around here, there's no bus I could get on even if I wanted to. But it's a reminder that the hour you spend here or the couple minutes you spend watching this video, they're important. But the way you know if it really sunk in was how you lead the, your life the rest of the time. When you walk out the doors, how do you see the world? How do you approach your neighbor? How do you spend your time? Uh, every step along the way in that book, CJ's looking to complain. He's looking to find something wrong, and that's okay. But he complains about the rain, and his uh, Nana reminds him that the trees need water. And he, he complains about riding the bus, and uh, she reminds him how joyful an experience it can be to meet new people and see familiar faces. He, he complains about not having an iPod, and she reminds him that that means she gets to listen to the people around him. And, and in that, he gets, to, he gets to hear this beautiful music and have this wondrous experience. And, and he even complains about having to go to the soup kitchen. But she reminds him of the friends they know there and that it is a chance to see something beautiful, even in the places we wouldn't expect it. Every step along the way in this book, CJ's Nana is reminding him to be grateful, to approach the world with a sense of wonder, and then also encouraging him to be open to the world around him. They're faced at every turn with the chance to close themselves off, get in a car, put your headphones in, just go straight home after church. And at every opportunity, they, they get the chance to be grateful what they have, to have some wonder and awe at the world around them, and they get the chance to meet new people, learn new things. When I think about Jonah, or I think about the disciples. Um, the disciples are more willing to go where they're called than Jonah is. But I wonder if they would have been so willing if they knew where they'd be headed with Jesus. If they knew that he would end up on a cross, would they have dropped their nets so quickly? As people of God, we are, have been given a great gift, which is the chance to just obey. We don't always have to understand the why, we just have to hear the call. But the truth is, God is sometimes going to call you to places you don't want to go 
into situations you'd rather avoid. God isn't just going to call us to places we're comfortable with. But in that, you see more beauty. You experience more wonder. And I believe following God's call makes you a lot more grateful. It's a challenge that God is continually calling us to be open to the world, to uh, live lives of gratitude and wonder. But I have to say, I think this church has done an amazing job. Just the, the willingness to be open to something like Stone Soup. Not not every church, and not many churches at all, would have done that. And, and what's more, um, just the ways in which we continue, even when things have been tough, even when you sit in church and wonder, <laughs> where is everyone? We still have joy, we still have wonder, and we're still grateful for what we have. There's work to do, there's ways we can be more open, uh, seek to love people more. But all of that's just the gift we get from hearing God's voice. And so I'm, I'm glad you're watching this or glad you're spending your Sunday with the Lord in one way or another. Um, but what's more important is, what is more important, I'll say it's more important, is how you spend the rest of the day and the ways in which you spend your week being open to one another, being grateful, and having a little bit of awe at the creation God's put us in. So go in peace. However you're going to spend the rest of the day, may it be blessed and may it be full of the Holy Spirit. God bless.